Burlesque by Kamari 333. Chapter 5 Morning After. Red woke up with his usual Sunday morning hangover, complete with the bittersweet peace of dreamless sleep paid for with his current skull shattering agony. His phone hissed and screamed at him with its usual alarm, the most obnoxious sound he could possibly find, which only exacerbated the pain making his acoustic meatus ring in painful, disjointed cacophony. He groaned, fumbling to reach over to where the awful noise was coming from, which seemed to be above his head. A part of his mind seemed to think that that was odd. Wasn't his bedside table more to the side, level with his face? But his skull was ringing, and the noise was overwhelming, and Red just needed it to shut the hell up so he could. He managed to switch the alarm off, somehow, Thank fuck for muscle memory. Sighing with relief, he snuggled back into the velvety cushion that was cradling his skull. He took a deep breath, holding it in before exhaling like he was taking a hit, reveling in the comforting scent that permeated the air. The whole ambience resulted in an atmosphere of serene safety, something that made him want to relax, to let his guard down, to drift back to sleep. The temptation was nearly too much. He was so comfortable. He didn't remember his cheap-ass box spring or his shitty slum apartment ever being this comfortable or warm or smelling this nice. It took Red all of five seconds to realize it. This was not his room. Red snapped to attention all at once, sitting bolt upright. He looked around, trying to figure out where the hell he was, trying to remember how he got here. He didn't recognize this room at all. Not that he could see much. The thick purple curtains were drawn tight, shielding the room from the harsh glare of the morning sun, keeping it in comforting shadow. More worrisome? Red couldn't remember much of anything from last night after drunkenly agreeing to get ice cream with lust. A few fragmented images hung hazy behind the darkness of his memories. Lust talking to a rabbit, the image overladen and highlighted with jealousy, cloying and hot. Something fuzzy and sparkling and cold that he had enjoyed. Creamy sweetness that permeated his skull and clung resolutely to the roof of his mouth. A pleasant warmth at his side. These brief flickers were less than useless. Red rubbed at his sockets, willing himself to stay calm and take stock of the situation. Firstly, he wasn't dead. That was a plus. Second, he wasn't injured. A hangover did not count. Third, he wasn't tied up or chained down. He could move his limbs any way he liked, and he didn't seem to be tethered to the bed or the wall either. Fourth, he still had all of his clothes on except his coat and shoes. So far, so good. Now let's see if he can find his shit. Red started acclimating his vision to the low light. First, he saw the little shelf over the spot where the headboard should be, a few shallow scratch marks now etched into the wood, proof that his phone had probably been put there for his convenience. He did spy, however, the actual bedside table, where there was a cup of what smelled like CT, which was great for hangovers. He saw his coat hanging on the hook on the back of the closed door. He used a bit of blue magic to bring it over. Ignoring how the effort made his skull ache and strain as though being split apart, and checked the pockets for all his other things. Everything seemed to be in perfect order. He even double-checked his dimension boxes. Nothing was missing. Shucking his jacket back on, Red got to his feet, finding his shoes were right there on the floor for him to slip on. He snatched the CT, sniffing it carefully, then used the app on his phone to check for poison. When that came back negative, only then did he take a sip, sighing in relief as just that little bit seemed to chase away the worst of his headache. Feeling better, he decided it was now time to investigate his new location. He crept over to the door, tapping the knob lightly, looking for a trap. When he found none, he tried the handle, surprised when it turned easily and let him open the door without resistance. The room beyond was streaked with shimmering sunbeams streaming through the open windows, the harsh brightness making him hiss in pain and clutch at his sockets. As he adjusted to the light, he saw a form frozen mid-step as it was crossing the room. Lust was clutching a Groby's bag, looking at Red with an almost owlish expression that only lasted for a fraction of a second, so brief Red almost missed it, before his easy, seductive smile returned. Did you sleep alright, sweetie? 
You weren't lonely, were you? Red looked around the room. Everything was covered in a fine layer of dust, as if nobody had used it in a while. The walls and table were bare. The air was cold, despite the warmth coming in from the windows. Only the dust on the couch seemed to have been disturbed, a wadded up blanket and two pillows, the most organic sign of actual usage to be seen. Where are we? Red asked, confused. Lusk continued his trek across the room, slow and deliberate, sitting down on the couch and setting the Groby's bag on the coffee table. Well, you fell asleep on that park bench, and I couldn't wake you up. But I couldn't just leave you out there, and I didn't know where you lived. Lust's confidence gradually seemed to wane, although Red was certain most monsters wouldn't notice the tiny details. The way Lust's smile strained, or his posture stiffened, or the crispness of his words slackened and faded. So I brought you home. Hope that's alright. Red looked back at him, all of his thoughts grinding to a halt as he was forced to process what had happened. The hilarity of it all bubbled up and Red started laughing. He noticed how all the tension in Lust's body eased, how he seemed to breathe easier. Red had to take a moment and catch his own breath, getting nervousness shaking off of him to be replaced with unexpected solace. <laughs> well, you didn't shank me, so I'd say that was alright. Shit. He wheezed, leaning against the doorframe. Lust smiled. If you're interested, I got breakfast. It's just a few burgers and some fries, but... Red looked at Lust, dumbfounded. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. Lust had seen Red in a legitimately vulnerable state, and instead of taking advantage of that, Lust had relocated him somewhere safe, giving up his bed in the process, gone out of his way to make Red comfortable, and even left something to assist him with his inevitable hangover, something Red never even bothered to do for himself. Then, then, Lust offers to feed him? Red felt the way his magic burned over his maxilla and nasal ridge. Who in their right mind could say no to a proposal like this? From a guy so genuinely charming, not to mention attractive? Lust would certainly be less than useless in a fight, but Red could handle that part. It was honestly flattering that Lust would think of him that way, that he would trust him, despite everything Red clearly was. Maybe this was what he had been missing all this time? It certainly felt like it. Red couldn't stop the smirk that spread across his face as he crossed the room, settling next to Lust on the couch. He reached for the bag with deliberation, cutting the sealing wax that held the bag closed, the wax color indicating to him it was from the sparkly grillbees that opened up three hours before dawn, just after nearly all the others seemed to close, and unfurled the top. He reached in, pulled out two of the burgers, and handed one to Lust. He made a show of unwrapping his carefully, folding up the colorfully decorated tinfoil and putting it into his pocket to save for later, then dug into the greasy delight with gusto. The meat was under-seasoned, there weren't any onions on it for that extra kick Red enjoyed, and it was decidedly lacking in mustard. Even so, Red had never enjoyed a burger more in his entire life. Licking the grease clean from his claws, not letting one drop escape, refusing to let anything even remotely hint at rejection, Red noticed with great amusement that Lust was watching him with pinprick eyelights, hyper-focused on the motions of his tongue. Red chuckled. Ain't you gonna eat, sweetheart? Lust jolted before immediately digging into his own serving, his own face dusted lightly with a pale indigo light. It was fucking adorable. Red watched him finish off the meal, a feral satisfaction roiling in his soul. Red leaned back, inspecting the room further. Despite being egregiously disused, it had a nice setup, with a state-of-the-art sound system and a widescreen TV that would have sparked a petty envy in Red had the situation not been what it now was. He located the remote and coaxed it over with blue magic, blowing the dust off the thing and flipping the TV on. I'm guessing you don't got much to do today? Wanna waste time doing nothing, uh, together? Lust checked his phone. I am meeting my brother for lunch today, but it's a late lunch, so maybe until then? Lust's voice almost managed to stay even, but Red could hear the slight upturn in pitch towards the end, the hopeful question. Sounds good to me. Ain't doing nothing today. He leaned back further on the couch, propping his feet up on the coffee table. He pulled the bag to his lap, 
a deliberate move, taking control of the last of the food, and started piecing off the fries still inside. Lush shifted closer to get a few for himself. Red took that opportunity to sling an arm around Lush's shoulders, casually and protectively. Something about the act felt familiar, but Red didn't think much of it. It was going to become familiar anyway. He wasn't oblivious to how quickly Lust got comfortable against his side. Bye.